Hey guys, welcome back to Rooted Homeschool. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm going to share with you how to make a garden themed sensory bin. If you didn't see my last sensory bin video, I did how to build a pond themed sensory bin. My kids loved that. Last week, we did a whole bunch of flower sensory ideas. And so this week, we are doing a garden themed sensory bin. So. We are using for our base for the garden theme, black beans, and then I'll be mixing in some pinto beans and some lentils. So I'll probably use, I'll use a full bag of these and then I'll use a half a bag of each of these because I'm actually gonna be making two of these. Typically I make one for my two-year-old, one for my five-year-old, just so that they each have their own kind of, kind of relax and do their own thing. So, Let's start with our base. So I have two bags of black beans. One of them I'll use for the other bin. So hopefully this is enough. I think it will be. So one bag of black. So just a two pound bag of black beans. Looking at it, I'm thinking you could probably go with more, but this is fine. I'll do half of these. I'm going to start with that much. And then I'll do a little bit of lentils because these are a smaller size just to kind of give some variation in color and texture. So add a little, kind of a lot. Put some in my other bin before they get so mixed in that I can't change it. All right, so there is my soil. Next thing I'm going to use is, I have these little planters. I had like the little terracotta pots and I was going to use those, but then I was like afraid that they would drop them and break them and like it could become dangerous. So I have these little plastic green ones. The next thing that I did is I um, included one of their shovels each that they got for in their Easter baskets and then one of these from the dollar store and I just snipped off um, each flower, individual flower, and there is a piece of wire inside. So I just took a piece of like natural looking green washi tape and just wrapped the bottom just in case it's sharp so they don't hurt themselves. So the idea is like they'll be able to plant these flowers. So they would just kind of fill the little cup with beans and then stick their little flower in there. And they could do obviously more than one, but that's sort of the idea with that. Then I also do have some leftover greens from our pond sensory bin. So I'll just like stick some of these in here, um, especially like the ones that have the butterfly on them. So I got these for our pond bin and then thought like they would be absolutely perfect for this one as well, especially because you're going to have butterflies in a garden, right? So you have those. And then I was even planning on doing some of these, which I had bought for the pond sensory bin to try to do, like to make lily pads. They're actually kind of hard to cut, but if you just cut the plastic and then snap um, the metal, it actually is pretty quick and easy. But if you try to cut through it, it's like, it doesn't work out. So I will just quickly wrap this and stick it right in the garden just to add like another little layer of texture. I'm not gonna do a ton of that, it's just to give it a little bit of texture. So my next thing, so here's my other flowers. And then I'll just show you So then again, I just take these, I snip it. When I get to the metal, you can easily snap it and then just quickly wrap it. You have your little shovel in there. Another really fun thing that I got was a package of worms. So I got the beans, obviously just from the grocery store, and I got all of the greenery and flowers from the dollar store. 
Um, these little shovels I got from Target. Um, the worms I got from Amazon. So I did link these in my Amazon storefront in case you want to grab some worms. So just kind of put a few of them. I'll put them like under the dirt because I really like for them to sort of be able to like dig in and discover stuff in there. Stick in another little flower. And then these were also bugs that I got for their pond bins that I would just stick in here too, just for fun. Um, just a couple little extra um, little bugs. You could even put the little tweezers still if you want for them to pull out um, any of the worms or anything like that. So on the very first day that I use this with them, I would probably use it just like this, just as a fun way for them to like plant the flowers, play with the beans, um, explore with the worms. I think they'll feel like that's really fun and really cool. The next day, what I would include is, um, and I already took them out of the package, but it is the life cycle kit. And I did also link these um, on my Amazon, but it has all of the stages of the life cycle of the worm. So I also grabbed this little mini unit. It was, I wanna say it was like $3 or $3.50. I'll link it in the description box below. It's really cool. It has, I didn't print everything out just yet. Um, just enough to show you guys. I did a similar thing with the pond sensory bin where I had all the different phases of the frog life cycle and I had the little um, sheet laminated and they could take out the different parts of the life cycle and just match them up. That's from Stephanie Hathaway Design. So on my second day, they'll get to um, explore a little bit about the worm. And then there's the little anatomy of a worm poster that I'll use. This earthworm ecology, which I think is super fun. And then here's just a little reading that I'll read to them about the earthworm. And then this is also a way for me to bring in my older boys because I can have them read through some of these things. And then there is some copy work, there's some poetry, um, there's some letter recognition with the letter E, there's a coloring page where they color the earthworm and then also trace the word. So really fun little mini unit for earthworms, which I definitely will use with this garden theme sensory bin. So I would do the same thing that I did with the little sort of rubber worms. I would put all of these under the dirt and then they would sort of explore and find them and match them up on the life cycle poster. So that's the second day. I also grabbed the bee life cycle. So I didn't print out anything yet. Um, but I am going to get a bee life cycle poster. And again, this has all of the phases of the life cycle for the bee. So that'll be a really fun talking about pollinators. So we can talk about how the worms um, fertilize the soil. So all the different stages of the bee are there as well. So this will be another day and another way to use this same sensory bin. So that'll be the bee. And then, I also grabbed the ladybug, the different phases of the life cycle of the ladybug as well. So this will be on another day. At the very least, I'll have like a ladybug book and a ladybug life cycle poster. Um, just a little something to go along with each one, maybe a coloring page of a ladybug. Um, so another day I'll do this. So this will give us like a full week of nature study and sensory play especially for my two and five-year-old. And then again, some of it I will link with things that I teach my nine and my 13-year-old. They'll just learn a little bit more in depth. And then last but certainly not least, I did get the butterfly life cycle. And I have already ordered a bunch of books from the library for this because during the month of May, in Exploring Nature with Children, which if you've been following me, you know that we started this a little over a month and a half ago, maybe two months now, and we are absolutely loving it. I'll also link that in the description box below. It is extremely affordable. I think it's $18 for a year of nature study, and it is amazing. We've been loving it. And in May, it's caterpillars and butterflies. So I'll be, um, using this as like my last one in this series and we'll kind of spend a little bit more time with this one. We're also going to be ordering the butterfly grow kit. So we'll actually be hatching some butterflies during the month of May. So this will be like a great activity leading up to it 
studying the life cycles before we actually witness all of the stages of the life cycle of the butterfly in real life. So that's gonna be super fun. I also have a lift the flap book in the playroom um, that asks like, where's the ladybug? And you like lift the leaf or you lift the flower petal. So I'll also include just like some of these leaves in here on the day that I do like the ladybug so that I can go through the book with my two and my five-year-old and say, oh, lift the leaf. And then they can find the ladybug. So really making those connections between the books and their sensory play. I've really been loving doing that. And I've really found that it really engages them not to just sit through a book and listen, which is important sometimes, but for them to be able to do something tactile with their hands and act things out. So I highly recommend using sensory play with books. You could use gardening books with this. You could use flower books. Next week in Exploring Nature with Children is actually grasses. So I might add even more of this because I do have a bunch of this. Um, and we could just really talk about the grass. So it's going to be a lot of fun. This is a really versatile sensory bin because of all the different things you can do with it. If you like this video, click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to follow along for more sensory bin ideas, curriculum reviews, and homeschool prep with me videos, maybe some what we eat in a day or like our favorite dinners, lots of really fun stuff coming up as we develop our channel. So we'd really love for you to stick around. Have you done a garden themed sensory bin? Do you think you'll try this one? What's your favorite sensory bin? Let me know all of it in the comments below. Follow along over on Instagram to see how I use this all throughout the week. Usually I make reels of my sensory activities, reels, stories, posts to see how we do this stuff on a daily basis at rooted underscore homeschool. And until next time, stay rooted.